Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about the process I went through thinking about how to build user interfaces as a longtime Java developer. So a couple of years ago, I wanted to build a web app, a Grab, Spring Boot, and Timeleaf, which is kind of the standard Java UI framework. And I decided to use something called HTMX to add some interactivity to it. What that let me do is write a sort of standard HTML in the time leaf and then add in a whole bunch of little extra tags and framework bits to the time leaf templates and controllers. And the idea is, is that HTMX lets you add a few little tags to the HTML that let you dynamically swap certain things out. Let's say you're working on a to-do list. Every time you add something or remove something from that list, you're going to add or remove a little chunk of HTML that you then fetch from the server. You write one template and have little tiny chunks of it that then get swapped out and updated as you're going. It was really cool. And I did a video on it. I posted up a, my GitHub repo with some demo projects and kind of talked about how to do things like using a Spring Boot with things like a visual page designer. But I kept finding myself hitting limits. Let's take that to-do list as an example. I was running into problems coordinating and synchronizing the state between the client side and the server side. I also ran into a bunch of other limitations, including the fact that the ecosystem was tiny. There's just very few people that are building and working with apps that way. I wanted to integrate in other SDKs. What I'd find was there'd be a standard JavaScript SDK, and then there'd be no Java SDK, or if there was a Java SDK, it was really only intended for the server. This is where I started to struggle a little bit. What I found was that HTMX was really cool if I wanted to add interactivity to a legacy app. If I had some old Struts app that I needed to maintain, I could add a little HTMX and add some interactivity. Timely, same thing. Add a little HTMX, add some interactivity. It was cool. Let's say that you're a server-side Java developer, and one day your boss walks in and says that they want to add an infinite scroll to that legacy HTML app. It's great. Same thing like, you know, maybe you've got a little PHP app and you want to be able to fetch some HTML and slap it in or what have you. All that stuff was good. But again, I just started running into all these challenges and I kept wanting to do things that I couldn't do cleanly. Like let's say I want to support spa mode or have a PWA or any of that kind of stuff that really just wasn't there. So I did go ahead and look at some of the front end tech and I've been following that stuff for years, ever since Ember and Angular and, and React and all that stuff. And I found it frustrating, kind of complicated in a lot of ways. It felt like it was getting more in the way than it was helping me out. And then about a year and a half, two years ago, I started working with a framework called SvelteKit. And SvelteKit felt to me more like, you know, Drop Wizard or Spring Boot when it was kind of small and starting out and light and clean. It has very clean support for HTML and CSS and JavaScript and TypeScript and all that stuff. I could create a new project and it was tiny and lean and didn't have a lot of dependencies in it and start working and it was just fast and fun again. Part of what was really cool was that I could add a couple configuration tweaks and it would run exclusively as a spa, or I could tell it to just run in server mode, or I could have it do a hybrid thing where it would automatically generate the HTML on the first render and then do incremental updates all out of the box without me having to do anything. The other one that got really interesting was how much I started to discover that I actually like TypeScript. I found that the type system was actually in many ways more interesting and richer than a lot of the typing stuff that I was getting from Java or C Sharp. Things like working with JSON were much easier because I wasn't having to deal with quite as much impedance mismatch between what was in JavaScript and JSON and what was in TypeScript versus trying to get things to map properly in Java or C Sharp. If you're curious about comparing the syntax between SvelteKit and some of the other frameworks, there's this really cool site called Component Party that you should go ahead and hit. Here's an example of some of the differences between how SvelteKit works and how something like React works. And you really notice that was something like the JSX. I found it was a lot easier to support having two projects. I could have my Spring Boot project, which was just a nice clean REST project, and I could write my test suite like I wanted. And then all of my UI testing and all the things that I wanted to do related to that, I could put in the SvelteKit project. It was a very much cleaner separation. It wasn't like I was trying to slam Timeleaf and HTML and CSS back into my nice clean Java project. Now I had 
two separate things that actually did the right thing for each one. When I messed around with TypeScript years ago, one of the challenges was that there just weren't a lot of frameworks and tools that supported TypeScript typing, and nowadays it's pretty standard. In fact, that's a really easy way to, to tell if a framework's been updated in the last few years is whether or not they've got TypeScript types on it. I kept looking for SDKs for things for client side, and there was always a TypeScript SDK. Stripe, Revenue Cat, Firebase, Supabase, all these other cool packages and technologies that I wanted to mess around with. They'd have TypeScript SDKs, but they wouldn't have Java SDKs, especially for client side stuff. Then you're back to hand rolling all that stuff yourself. Um, in terms of performance, I found that TypeScript and modern JavaScript stuff supports async away out of the box, which means that everything I did, I could make async. It's much easier to build a responsive app um, that had immediate feedback, especially for things like dealing with server network traffic in a very clean way that provides all that nice UI that you want for that sort of stuff. On the deployment side, I found it was really trivial to deploy my app, especially as a spa, to Vercel. The app itself could get distributed to their edge framework all over the world, and then the app would get loaded into the browser, and then it's just hitting the REST services. It's very clean for that. If I wanted to support mobile development, I was able to add in Capacitor and just a couple of configuration tweaks, and now I have a mobile app. I could do things like have the mobile app use native sign-in with Apple, and then on the web app, go ahead and default to the OAuth, and it was just a few lines of code to be able to support both of those. Add a little bit of configuration, and now it's a desktop app using something like Tori or Electron or Neutralino JS. If I want to support all those platforms, like I want to be able to have one app that supports being run on the web, on mobile, and on desktop, I can do all that with just a few extra little flags. Really easy. The SvelteKit dev server supports hot load properly in the browser. That means that I could use a tool like a polypane to see the project running at the same time in multiple different sizes and resolutions, which you can do that with Spring Boot and Timely, except, oh wait, the hot module replacement stuff means that hot reload works much better. Same thing on an emulator. I was able to use the iOS emulator and uh, get hot reload working trivially with SvelteKit. SvelteKit it has a compiler that it's how it injects all the things that it does, including all the data binding or signals, incremental update stuff. That's the way that people talk about it nowadays. So I was able to get very fast, responsive UIs with very, very tiny apps. Something like Tori, a Hello World app, was like a megabyte versus you know 20 or 30 or more megabytes if I am carefully trimming down a Java app. I'm getting faster apps. I'm getting lighter weight apps. Learning stuff like HTML and CSS and JavaScript and TypeScript, those are like SQL. They're going to be around forever. When it comes to investing in, in a language and a stack, that's a much better place to be. But here's the thing, is like, what's the downside of learning something like SvelteKit? It's just time. It's just an investment in time. It honestly was a lot quicker for me to come up to speed on SvelteKit than it was, frankly, to come up on the most current versions of Timeleaf, because the investment in terms of the, the, the technical stack is one thing when it comes down to just learning HTML and CSS and JavaScript. You just got to kind of chew through that. Modern CSS is really nice now turns out. Modern TypeScript is actually pretty cool. If you're a Java developer in 2024 or later, I would strongly recommend that you just bite the bullet, go check out the SvelteKit site, work through the material in the docs. They've got an unbelievably good in-browser-based tutorial system, good documentation, and just try it. And once you're over the hump, maybe it takes you a couple days or a week or two, depending on how much prior experience you have with stuff like HTML, CSS. I hope that's helpful for you. And if you like this video and this kind of material, don't forget to like and subscribe and drop a note in the comments. Let me know what you think. Take care.